and welcome to ASEAN Talent. You might be wondering where I am today. Well, ASEAN Talent has an appointment with two representatives of the SIAM Organic team who went to compete in the Stu Clark competition in Canada with their business plan to sell the Jasmine Jasberry rice, which is their flagship product. They also were the ones who were the only Thai representatives, the first and only, who went to rang the bells at NASDAQ, which is the second largest stock exchange in New York. Well, let's go in and meet with them right now. And now I am with two members of the Siam Organic team that I just mentioned earlier. And I'm also sitting here at the Siam Organic headquarters. Can you uh, introduce yourself a little and which position are you in in the team? Great. Uh, my name is Pontida and I'm acting as the business development director of the company. And uh, my name is Peter Shai and I'm acting as the chief executive officer of the company. Uh, so the the company, the Siam Organic team, has went to a uh, challenge in the Stu Clark competition. What is the competition about and how did you get there? So this uh, competition is basically held in Canada and is a competition open for MBA level students from all over the world. And the final was held in Winnipeg, Canada and consisted of uh, 16 teams in the final and we were the only team f invited from Thailand as, as we have um, prior to that we have won the Bangkok Business Challenge. How did you guys manage within the team? How many people are in there? Right, we have five people in our team mm -hmm. and um, I was in charge of the business development section and he was the CEO and we have another person um, named um, Pradeep Akunor, he's an Indian um, student at Satsin and he's acting as the chief marketing officer. Another person is um, Apilat Huanan, he was um, do, um, dealing with the operation of the business side. Another member is called um, Nitipong Rong Watana and he was the chief of financial officer. What sort of business plan did you present it to them that won the prize, the competition? So the business plan that we have is we have the um, major product of Jasberry, which is ultra high antioxidant and it's been grown organically from Thailand mm -hmm. and we will export it to the US, selling to organic consumers mm -hmm. in the US. What was you know the significance of the plan that okay, uh, made you won the competition? Okay. I would say that for one thing, we, we focus on a, a new market, a fast growing market, which is the organic market. Um, the second part was that this is a real innovation. This is a new variety of rice that is uh, extremely superior to other competitors on the market from a nutritional standpoint. And that was something that they found very exciting because in agriculture, it's not often you see innovation. We brainstorm a lot. There was one night that all the five team members brainstormed about the name of this product for many, many hours. Mm -hmm. And the funniest thing was we came up with about five or six names that we thought were good and we put it out in a survey for the consumers to pick. Mm -hmm. And the number one choice was Jasberry. And it was because the the nice uh, tasting jasmine rice, uh, which is the word jazz, and the antioxidant property of the berries. So we combine that and we call it jasberry, which I know that people have come up to us and asked whether it is a berry test. How was the process like? Is it just like you go up on the stage and present your business plan? What does it take? in there, what sort of challenges do you have to face? First of all, is this is a presentation for potential investors. So the company that win is supposed to represent the best investment opportunity. Mm -hmm. So prior to the competition, we prepare for almost what, two, three months? Three months, three months in advance of the competition, mm -hmm. put together a PowerPoint presentation that covered all the major aspects of the business. And we were given five to 10 minutes to present, uh, followed by another five minutes of Q&A. So um, the, it was a very grueling uh, process okay. mentally. 
uh, to have expert from all kind of uh, field like uh, we have some lawyer on, on the judging panel um, yeah. some marketing expert some operation experts finance some expert it was really a challenge even though we believe that we have like the best product um, but the judges with all the experience of the judges we will really, really have to be challenged and also the team other team that competing with us they were like from the top level of the world, world-class business school, so mm -hmm. you really have to um, break the limit of being a student and be, um, be confident and show them what we have. One other thing I, I said was that, you know, win or lose, we know that this is for real. This is what we're going to do, okay? And it doesn't matter if other people don't believe in us, but we have to believe in ourselves. Mm -hmm first and foremost. So we went in with the attitude like we had nothing to lose. Right. We were going up against Kellogg, you know, some top university and that we know are probably better than us at English, definitely, presentation skills and a few other other things. But but we know that it's real. So it, it didn't really matter so much. And we were confident going in. Uh, what based on what criteria do you think that they voted for your team? The biggest criteria is the what they call fundability. So basically, would they like to put their own money into this company? And that was the number one criteria. There are other criteria such as the team, which is very important. If they didn't believe that the team could execute the strategies it says it will execute, then there's no chance. Mm -hmm. So they had to believe in their management team. Um, they had to believe in, in the product. And then of course, they look at financial viability of this company. Uh, whether it, we would have enough cash and so forth. So it's very realistic, I would say, because the judges are all mostly over 50, uh, 50 years old, um, very senior uh, position. So they know what it takes to start a company and to have a run a profitable business. Uh, you were the first Thais who went to NASDAQ and got the invitation to ring the bell at NASDAQ, the closing bell. What, how did you feel and what was that all about? Right, it's part of winning the competitions, the Clark Competition in Canada. Mm -hmm. As a surprise, we were invited to close the NASDAQ bill um, on the 26th of August. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we found out that we were the first Thai company to have that opportunity to ring the bell. So what does it feel like? Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was pretty uh, nerve-wracking because uh, we had to give our 60-second speech as well and we were told that it would be televised all over the world. Um, and we didn't realize where, and we saw ourselves on the CNBC screen and um, a few other screen in, in, the, in the studio. And then that's when it hit us that, that how, how big it was with you know, thousands of people in Times Square looking on. So it was something that it was really a once in a lifetime you know, privilege to, to be able to do that. So within that 60 seconds, did you remember what you said? I remember I had a blank just right, <laughs> right before yeah. that. And I took a one you know, deep breath and I went out. And I definitely, uh, we, we were so proud that we were th th from Thailand. So what we say was a lot about Thailand. And we had the Thai flag with us. Yeah, so we had we had Thai flag waving everywhere, and and it was like it was like a, an Olympic gold medal for us, you know. <laughs> like what I would imagine is the same kind of experience. When we plan initially plan to contact with the farmers, it's like you know we we have like one type of mindset that we want to offer something good to them, and then they will accept and they will follow the guidelines. But the reality is not like that because there's so many factors that are affecting their life. So we have to consider all that factors. <laughs>